Welcome to Total Picture Media. I'm your host, Peter Clayton. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into virtual events, how to host them, how to participate successfully in them. Uh, after all, if you're interested in uh, uh, hosting an event or attending one these days, the only way to do it that, you know, it's virtually, unless you're the Florida chapter of SHRM awarded a Darwin Award by the Chad and Cheese podcast. <laughs> but, um, you know, most of the time it's virtual. And I'm joined today through the magic of Zoom, no surprise there, by my good friend and fellow LRP exile, Ward Chrisman. And Ward <laughs> is the evangelist for all things related to HR Tech Alliances. Uh, not only has he turned his signature Collaboration Zone events uh, virtual, he has created uh, a greatly expanded uh, frequency to these events, hold, hosting uh, a new virtual collaboration event every month, which is unbelievable. So we're going to pick Ward's brain on how the hell he pulls this off, because I can tell you as someone who has um, in, done his entire video production and shifted it to Zoom for the past eight months, there's a lot that goes in behind the scenes to make all of this actually work. Mm -hmm. So Ward, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us today here on Total Picture. It's great to see you again. I think the last time we were together was uh, in beautiful Amsterdam at Unleash. How have you been? I've uh, been surprisingly really good um, in many ways. This pandemic's awful, but um, it's helped a number of businesses, as we know. And on one hand, uh, I'm actually, I was supposed to be in Singapore right now this week for one of the tech events that was rescheduled from the spring. Of course, they went online and did it virtually. Uh, I was supposed to go to Dubai and London with, you know, Unleash and all these things got canceled. But uh, the great thing is there is options like Zoom and other platforms to meet and connect and collaborate online and, you know, with hopefully with a, a video engagement so that it, it brings it, um, more, makes it more personable. And, you know, the, actually there's, there's so many online events now, um, it's getting quite noisy. I'm sure you, you get yeah, the, 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 the number of online events and webinars is just, you know, I mean, every day we're all getting emails about, hey, you know, this this virtual event or that webinar, you know, it's it's how everybody's having to do business these days. It's true. And, you know, webinars always had a, a purpose and I've been participating or giving them, you know, forever, it seems back in even the late 90s. But nothing beats the opportunity to meet people face to face. Um, if you're looking to add a new partner or grow through existing partnerships, you know, having that chance to meet in a person level, um, certainly face to face, but then also just to socialize, you know, after events and so forth, it really helps build trust. And if you're trying to either land a new partner or grow an existing partnership, trust is, is a, a, you know, foundational element that you need to have. Um, so in-person helps. And the next best thing is, you know, video call. And, you know, that's something that this will be, we, week after next, we'll have our 20th collaboration zone. And this will be our seventh virtual wow. one. Wow. So, uh, yeah, we figured out a lot. Um, we, we used to lease essentially SaaS platforms to help do the matchmaking and the meetings and bookings and um, and always kind of running into roadblocks, especially if we had to use the system that the, the conference organizer, or let's say our partner, the event partner had that tend to be very, if at all, um, very inept, if I can be polite <laughs> about best practices around collaboration and making it easy for people to meet. So we've been hard at work since the end of February when we knew things were gonna change completely, taking our recently launched platform, hrtechalliances.com and expanding the meeting functionality that was already baked in to empower what we believe best practices are for 
the vendors to meet with each other to discover new partnerships and to, to grow their existing ones and to learn and just collaborate with peers and people are missing that tremendously. So um, we've been filling a very needed gap in the, the market right now. And, you know, we're, we're thrilled to, to be bringing that out to, to the masses. Well, uh, on that same thread, um, how have you been able to get folks to play along, Ward? You know, the sponsors, judges, contestants, collaborators. Uh, I'm guessing there was a certain amount of resistance to this idea of, uh, you know, doing, trying to do these things virtually, right? Yeah, I think, well, f a lot of people were kind of frozen in their tracks for, it seems like, a few months before they realized, yeah. you know what, there has to be other ways to connect with customers, which is what most of the vendors are looking for, right? New, new ways or ways, period, to connect with the buyers in a meaningful way, at least as a group. And with a lot of these events just being canceled, or if they move to an online format, they're just doing a webinar, very you know, one directional kind of thing. And that doesn't cut it uh, in most cases, because you don't know is, are they listening? Who's in the audience? A lot of times you don't know, you might get a list of who registered in the past, but then you're back to really cold calling. And, you know, that's really hard. So we've tried to elevate, at least on the, the vendor to vendor collaboration side, we've elevated it to what we've done very well in person. You've been at some of these events in Toronto and, and Paris and uh, Vegas and so forth where you know the vendors get together around a topic or they have private one-on-one -on -one meetings to explore partnering or maybe even investing and things like that and have that tactic you know that um, tactical or i guess you know that personal connection there and in a roundtable format zoom is pretty good in terms of providing uh the opportunity for those who want to speak so it's more of an engaging conversation that's led perhaps by a session leader, we call them session leaders, versus somebody's just talking and then the next person comes up and talks, you know, in a webinar kind of conference format. <clears throat> and um, we haven't done that because, you know, you, there's thousands of webinars available now if you want, and most of them are also put up on YouTube or someplace you can watch them. There's not a lot of benefit of being there real time like it is having a conversation with a group. Well, well speaking about um, Zoom and, and how you are, uh, you know, structuring this thing, mm -hmm. um, when you decided to start doing virtual events, uh, did you look at other platforms like On24 and, you know, what was your decision process in deciding to use the Zoom? And I'm, I'm assuming you, there's, there's different Zoom platforms. There's, there's the Zoom meeting platform, there's a Zoom webinar mm -hmm. platform, which is more expensive, uh, has some uh, additional features that the meeting platform doesn't have, although the meeting platform has features um, that the webinar platform doesn't have. So uh, are you using the, the meeting platform? Yeah, exclusively. And you know, much like um, our friends that, that ran HR Tech Tank, in person, uh, by design, we keep our events small so that you can actually have discussions. As soon as you get over on, you know, on a, whether it's WebEx or Zoom or whatever, as soon as you get over like 15 or 20 people, uh, it's really hard to, to get people conversing. There's, there's too, too many people in, the, in that session. So we've really worked hard to keep the attendee quality high, the topics relevant and and let people opt into it. You know, we, we take a more of an open house approach and allow people to register in advance for the session. And, and if, if you think it helps, I can kind of walk through a couple screens here to show what that looks like. But, you know, in terms of the opportunity to join a discussion with your peers, again, versus just sitting in an audience and listening is, is extremely valuable and uh, people really commit the time to join because it's not something you can do in serial it has to happen you know in parallel and uh that's so that's been our approach the web I've looked at the webinar format and although it's a little cleaner in terms of a panelist approach you know what what we launched 
actually in in August, and we're going to be doing again in September and going forward, in addition to the private one-on-one -on -one meetings and also the um, the sessions that people can sit in on these roundtable topic discussions. We launched a um, competition, and this is where early stage or a new product from a larger company, perhaps they want to get some feedback from some of the industry experts, investors, analysts, um, thought leaders, influencers, and it's hard to get that right now without these other events going on. So we're providing that forum and making a competition so that based on the judges scoring, you know, there can be winners and maybe the ones that aren't winners, but it really helps elevate what we believe best of class in, in each of these categories. We started last month with learning and development, had some great contestants. The judges were awesome. And, you know, they, they, there's a small fee, a nominal fee for the, the competitors to, to be in it if they want to uh, apply and, and be part of the competition. But, you know, to get in the front of six or eight of the top industry thought leaders and have that FaceTime, even if it's just to help get your brand out there for a couple hundred bucks, it's uh, it's a huge value that you just, you can't get anywhere and, and we're probably charging too little, but you know, uh, it's a business model that's been working great we're, and we're excited to do it again, September, October and so forth. So just to give you a quick walkthrough here, this is the homepage for HR Tech Alliances and people can join for free and have access to our large database of companies and so forth. If they want to participate in the virtual collaborations and there's two types of tickets now. One is for groups or people that want to be in the competition, for example. And this month is going to be on the best new talent acquisition solutions. And then uh, if you just want to attend as an HR tech or HR service executive, you get a ticket and we've got, um, you know, for sure you could kind of walk through learn about what is what are one-on-one -on -one meetups versus roundtable topic discussions and then of course the the collaboration competition get a sense for what that is and you can see it's maybe a little small on the screen there for september we've got you know amazing set of uh, judges um jackie clayton tin cup sarah brennan elaine orler the chad and cheese you know folks matt charney and it goes on and on um, some are investors like Ilanka jankovic launching a new uh, venture um, called uh, it was a Tat Trove, and she's a founding partner there on, on that. So exciting new money coming out in the market that are looking for great companies to invest in. Um, some industry thought leaders like Tim Sackett and uh, Deb Antruchik from Shaker. Karen yeah, this Zula, is a great lineup so of, of people that you've got. Yeah, and they, they all you know say, hey, we, we volunteer, but this is awesome. We want to help support the collaboration platform and uh, cool. highlighting good technology that's out there. And, and they want to see it too, right? They want to see it as much as anybody. The, um, the last two guys are Colin and Rob, Bob, for example, they're in investment banking. And, you know, if, <laughs> if you're looking at some point to sell your business, you know, these are the kind of guys you want to meet or at least have them aware of what you're doing. So being an applicant um, and if you're selected as one of the top 10 to pitch, uh, the top three winners actually that are scored by the judges will get um, some great prizes. There's uh, the top three get to pitch at the HR Tech Virtual Summit. I know, Peter, you've been to the HR Tech uh, Summit in Toronto in the past. Mm -hmm. They're going virtual and they've carved out a half an hour for those top three contestants to pitch. And at the end of that, that's where they get to actually be seen by buyers, unlike our event where it's just for the vendor to vendor relationships. Um, so that's, you know, one of the prizes and then Harbinger Systems donating a VC level tech review. So if you're looking to get investment or maybe be acquired, uh, you know, one of the first things they want to know is, hey, is your tech solid? You know, is there something that you need to know before you maybe even go to the VCs or, or PEs or whoever might be buying the company or investing in it? So these are all good things that um, you know, we're, we're proud to, to bring out to the market, give people exposure and elevate the, um, the industry at the same time, have a uh, you know, chance for people to talk about things that matter, like build by our partner, right? And mm -hmm. things like that. And we'll have some thought leaders leading some roundtable topics and discussions. 
And um, the um, just walk into the our platform here. The events we we've got a couple hundred events inventoried from over the years. We're adding more beside our own. But if it's one of our own here, where you can come into like this event, I'm currently logged in as Dawn. Um, I can see the the schedule of sessions, and I'll just right now the judges aren't assigned a spot yet because we're um, getting the final applicants in. But again, you know the names names are here. There's others. Um, pictures are going to be there, but they're going to divide up and conquer and, you know, have five or six of these judges in each of the sessions. And they're going to be able to provide some great feedback, you know, to, to the presenters. Um, there is an opportunity to request a meeting with, with these folks. So let's say um, I'm, I'm logged in as, as Dawn at the moment here, I'm not going to have her invite one of these judges, but I'll, I'll have her invite me here. Let's see if I can, Narrow it down. There you go. So let's say Don wants to meet with me. She can review my background, check out my social links. There's a, a profile on everybody in our platform as well that they can review. And then to send a one-on-one -on -one meeting invite, you simply put in why. Um, let's talk about partnering. And then they get to pick a time. And this is really the magic. Before the session started, Peter, you asked about well, what, did we look at other platforms? And yeah, we've used a lot of them over time. We've paid a lot for some of these systems, but since we already had a platform that the community is embracing and joining for a variety of reasons, we took some of the features already built into the platform and enhanced them to allow people to book, let's say private meetings. And the, I'm sure, you know, everybody is listening to this is familiar with, you know, you go to an event and you want to meet somebody, you see them and they're like, I can't talk now. I'm heading to this session or I'm going, you know, I've got something else already planned. Well, if everybody shared a common calendar, then you can book times that are mutually available. So that's what we've done in the platform. If, if people block their time, uh, you won't see that as an option. In this case, if Dawn wants to meet with me first thing in the morning, 7 a.m. her time, <laughs> Good for her. So let, so let me ask you a, a question it. really quick here, oh, Ward. So yeah. if if I sign up to take part in the collaboration zone in September, will I get access to this platform? And can I use this platform then to request meetings with people that are attending? That's exactly right. Yep. Anybody that's, that's awesome. on the list, you can request and like any other event or you know linkedin or anything else just because you ask them to meet doesn't mean they're right. going to accept it right right um, but if they do it locks it in on both calendars blocks your time nobody else can book there and <clears> as you can see here it's pending and i'll have an email saying do you want to meet with don and, and if i accept it it'll switch it over to accepted there'll be a link for a private zoom room that you can go into when it's seven o'clock and you have your chat for a half an hour, or whatever, you know, that's the maximum, but you have your chat and then, um, you know, you can leave and have a next meeting or, or go to one of the sessions. And it's, it's super easy just to, to come in and sign and reserve a seat. And as soon as you do, you can see, um, I'll do it on this one here. You can see who else is attending. If you're, if you're a presenter or a panelist or a judge, you'll be able to see who else is presenting uh, I mean, who else has registered? If you're just an attendee, we give you a 24 hour window before the event where you can see who else is going to be there as an attendee. So instead of going to a, a meeting and you spend a half an hour or half the time, you know, introducing each other, you don't need to do that now. You can see who else has registered. And if they're on the Zoom call, you can look at their profile and, you know, get to know who's there before you even turn up for the, the session and it really makes it more engaging because then you go, oh, instead of looking, I don't know if you ever did this on Zoom, right? You look at their name, you're like, well, who the hell is that? And you're Googling and you're off on LinkedIn, you know, and you're not paying attention to the session anymore. So, yeah, so from our view, best practices, make it easy people to register, make it easy for them to know who else is in the room. And if they do their homework and figure out who they really want to talk to or who they want 
to meet privately one-on-one -on -one based on commonalities and so forth, we make it super easy for them to do that. This is really exciting. I, um, I am sure that there has been, a, well, th that this has really been a learning experience for you as well, right? Now, you've done seven of these now. Um, yeah. You know, let's face it, everyone's, you know, work lives have been completely upended due to COVID-19. So um, what adjustments or changes have you made uh, and, and what learnings have you gained with all this experience now that you've done seven? I'm sure things have changed from the first one to this one. Yeah, they sure have. Um, I mean, the first one we launched in March, the only thing we had available at the time was one-on-one -on -one meetings, and that was still really hard to, to do with different time zones and everything. And, you know, a lot of these commercial systems, they've figured that out. Most of them weren't built for doing online events. They were built for physical events, so a lot of them have had to adapt, and most of them have done a great job. Um, but they're expensive, and you have to learn them, and you don't own them. And if you want something different, you're good luck getting them to change it, right? Right. right. <laughs> so, you know, just like in partnerships, do you want to have a partner to deliver certain tools? Do you want to build it yourself? Do you want to buy it or, you know, or partner, build by your partner? And, you know, in this case, we decided to, to build it ourselves on our existing platform because it's already, a lot of these people have profiles already. So it makes it easier just to adopt your profile, go in, have your meeting, and then um, come back later and reconnect with some of the people if you want. Uh, but what, you know, what did we learn? I think uh, people, you know, they also wanted an easy way to join sessions and um, the first, yeah, our first uh, online one this year and back in March, most of the topic leaders spent literally, I mean, out of an hour session, they spent almost a half an hour just going around the room, getting everybody introduced. And, and that's great if that's what you're there for. But if you're there to talk about a topic and get different points of view and, and to share your point of view and to learn and engage and collaborate, going around the room introductions is, is a waste of time. So that's why I mentioned earlier, we, we made it easy for them to see who else is in the room um, and you know, continue to refine that. Like this month, we're, we're going to launch, um, when you click to go into the Zoom room, it'll log on our platform that you've gone in. And if you didn't register, you can't get in. You have to register first. So we know who's in the room, who went, who went. Sometimes people don't show up for whatever reason, right? And you can look at their, their profiles and you'll see a little green check mark on their picture if they actually came in the room. So if you're looking at Zoom and, and maybe they don't have their name or, or whatever, you can, you, can, uh, you can just look at the, the platform in your other window and say, oh, that's who that is. That's Joel or that's Karen, you know? And, um, and in my case, you know, a week later or a month later, maybe even the next day, it's like, all right, who was in that session? <laughs> I forgot, you know, you can go back and look. Mm -hmm. And instead of seeing everybody that registered, you see, here's everybody that registered and the green check shows who actually showed up. I haven't seen that on any platform anywhere. Um, and, you know, I think it, I think it's valuable. So I don't know what's your, what's your thoughts to, to know yeah. who actually showed up versus just registered. So uh, on the Zoom back end, are, are you using breakout rooms to kind of organize the various uh, roundtable sessions that you're doing? Is, is that how you're doing it? Not yet. No. Um, we've intentionally kept the events smaller, mm -hmm. um, but that is one thing, and maybe you can be my private advisor on that if you got that figured out, because we haven't explored it. I know it's an option, and that sounds like a good one that would help um when there's there's too many people for one session right the way the way so far the, let's say we have you know 80 people registered um you know people are busy right they've got other things throughout the day they pop in for a couple sessions they go do whatever right. they come back maybe so we've we've had luckily it's been really well balanced you know anywhere from a dozen to 20 people in a session and that's 
right up there about the, the right, right mix. Uh, yeah, I think um, the, the limit um, when you go into gallery view on Zoom is 49 people, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, there's 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 some things that, but that again for to have a, a actual like we're having a discussion here or a conversation, uh, you know, there's some pretty well known, well not well known, but pretty well um, validated limits that you don't want to go past if you want them to be right. effective and meaningful. Breakout rooms could be perfect way. I know even HR Tech Tank used to do that and. Um, TA Tech and some others, right? Where they're like, mm -hmm. okay, this room's going to be this topic, this room. So, yeah, we want to do that. And maybe as soon as like October, right? The, um, screening selection topic where we'll, we'll have some different, you know, um, right. thought leaders leading sessions in different rooms. Yeah. Well, you know, at the, the roundtable sessions I've attended that you've hosted, like in, in Toronto, each table had a specific topic and someone who moderated yep. that topic, right? In yep. fact, we did a, a really good podcast with um, Sarah Brennan and uh, Tin Cup. and William Tincup. That was awesome. And I'll put a link to that in, in the uh, oh, show yeah, notes yeah. because that, that was an evergreen conversation. It really was. Yeah, and, and actually I need to, to reach out to them, see if they, since they're both going to be judges, see if they also want to do that again as an encore for, for this event. That would be cool. Absolutely, and and helpful because everybody I talked to, yeah, that came out of that, they're like, you yeah, know, I thought I knew what was what out there and very, very valuable insights from those two. They're amazing. So I want to get into one thing with you and, and, and switching back to the attendee side for a moment. Um, I recently published a, a blog post titled A Zoom Video Survival Guide, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. I, and I think most people watching or listening to this uh, are at least familiar with Zoom and other meeting apps like Skype and GoToMeeting. However, does, that does not mean they're aware of the tech that they need to use for video conferencing to be very effective. You know, and one really basic example is ethernet you know using ethernet yeah. for your connection instead of wi-fi makes a huge difference True. Um, and, and as you know ward a lot of newer laptops you know no longer have ethernet ports which means you have to go to get an adapter and a cat5 cable um you know i'm sure you you run into the same thing so how do you get all of the you know, especially like your judges and, and collaborators and, and, you know, the sponsors uh, up to speed on the tech that they're going to need to, um, to do this. I mean, obviously, yes, you and I, I are talking, we both have studio setups to do <laughs> Zoom. Yeah, no, we're going to send them to your blog so they're prepared. I, you know, that's excellent point. And it's not even on a checklist that I have to share with them or to even ask them during, you know, kind of prep calls, but it, it sure should be. It's, you know, I I'll, I'll send you, uh, I'll send you my, my uh, blog post because it, it details all the various things and things people can get like, you know, uh, a, a ring light so that they look good. Right. For yeah. 40 bucks on Amazon. I mean, it's simple stuff like that or, you know, getting a stand for you. Yeah. So getting a stand for your computer so you can elevate it so your your eye level with whom you're talking to so you know your people aren't either looking up at you or you're not looking down at people. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, sometimes you I'll know, see people they're taking notes or typing. I don't know what, but they look down and and they look like they're sleeping. It's like yeah, dozing off. <laughs> Not my sessions, of course, but maybe, uh, no, but that's probably, that's what they're doing. They're writing notes and yeah, it's like, mm, you got to figure out a different way, but yeah. So, so back to the uh, competition for a second. So that's something you're, you're doing with our friends up in Toronto. Um, how many contestants are there? How are the finalists selected? Yeah. How does this whole thing kind of work? So there's, and, and on our homepage, there's a link to the application form. So you could see, you know, if you're thinking you've got a great talent acquisition solution, something new, new product, new feature, whatever you want to put your hat in the ring, 
do it. It takes literally it takes 10 minutes to fill out tops unless, um, unless you've never you know, done a, a pitch before to even a customer. And um, we have the rubric in there. So it's five categories are all evenly, you know, scored percentage wise, 20, 20%. And um, really kind of, normal kind of uh, categories, except for one or two are a little more focused on alliances and you know, how do you fit into the ecosystem? Because that's what's important to us as an organization, helping the vendors connect and collaborate through the HR tech and HR service industry, right? So that ecosystem, um, if, you, if, you're, if you're not gonna be able to play nice in the sandbox or everybody else, you're, you're probably not gonna do well, or you might probably even more likely fail because you have to, participate and connect and collaborate to be successful. And, and I think most people know that, so it shouldn't be a tough question or a shocker, but to us, it's important. Um, and then at the end of the session, we, we allow one or two minutes for the judges to actually score. We pop up, we're just using the, the Zoom polling feature, it works great. The judges score, we tabulate at the end, we add it up and you know the best scores are the winners and get to uh, enjoy the prizes. You know, Ward, I think one of the interesting things about this, and this is something I keep hearing other people talking about when it comes to virtual events, mm -hmm. right, is the fact that you don't need a lot of lead time now to make a commitment to say, oh, all right, well, this event's only a week away, but hey, I, you know, I'm looking at my calendar. I can certainly block out a couple of hours and it would really be beneficial to me to participate in this. I don't have to get on an airplane. I don't have to book a hotel room. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to get pr approval from, you know, from somebody to spend right. this money. And, and I, I think that's one of the really cool things about doing these things virtually. It's so true. And what's interesting is since ours is designed to be collaborative, why we call it a collaboration zone, it's real time discussion and we don't generally we don't record the sessions because we want people to feel free to you know say what they're thinking and um, not have to worry about it being you know forever archived on the internet per se uh, but you're right people can just kind of pop in for a session come back later and unlike a webinar and that's one of our challenges frankly is you know people hear about this and they're probably immediately thinking oh here's another webinar and it's not that at all. There's, it's not like you can sign up and not show up and then watch the webinar later. There isn't anything to watch. Right. You missed it. Right. And I've had people say, oh my God, that session was amazing. Did you record it? I want to watch it again. I'm like, nope. <laughs> well, you're taking a, a, a page out of a TA Tech's playbook, right? Okay. Because a lot of times, you know, you've got venture capitalists, you know, the uh, the Bill Phillips of the world who are participating in these things and they don't want them recorded. Well, this is exciting, man. I mean, congratulations. You, you, and this is not easy. And, you know, and, and the fact that you're doing something that has all of these moving points, you know, the one-on-one -on -one sessions, the roundtable sessions, the competition, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of moving parts to this thing, right? It is. That, um, and, and this is an all day thing right? Nine to five Eastern time. And yeah, so and it's I, open, you know, I, open house style. So yeah, it's people kind of jump in when they want to jump in and jump out and then come back in. One of the contestants, actually the one that won last time, he's like, he goes, I, I need to switch sessions. I'm closing my um, series A round with Y Combinator and a few others in the afternoon. Can I move my session to the morning? And I'm like, oh my gosh, of course. <laughs> you know, I mean, and right. luckily we had a, a slot he could move into, but um, yeah, sometimes, you know, they can only make their own session or one or two. The judges are committed to doing at least two. Some, some stay for all of them. Of course, they don't score everyone, but, uh, you know, this is, this, this is not happening out there otherwise. And we're thrilled to, to make it happen and showcase great technology. Cool. Uh, I think that's pretty much covers what we wanted to, um, you know, inform people about today. I will ha put a link to um, your website, which is hrtechalliances.com and uh, in the show notes. And uh, how can people 
connect with you? Seems like the ubiquitous uh, platform is LinkedIn, certainly. It's just slash Ward Christman. And of course, join our platform for free, create or claim your profile. We've got 80,000 HR tech executives in our platform. You're probably already there. It's easy to claim it with your corporate email. And, and then, um, yeah, let's connect on HR tech alliances as well and talk about how we can collaborate to win more business. Well, this is a really interesting topic that you're covering this month, you know, uh, talent acquisition technology, because as you know, there's been so much disruption. And uh, if you listen to the Chad and Cheese podcast, I mean, every week they're talking about another company with layoffs, another company closing. And, you know, the, there, there's a lot of uh, I guess, yeah. disruption is the only word I can come up with in, in you know, in the space right now. So I think this, you know, what, like you mentioned, Ward, I think what you're doing is a, is a really necessary service to the, to the TA tech world right now. And we're thrilled to be part of it and uh, to help out. And, you know, we encourage everybody else to contribute, you know, and, and invite their friends to the event and, um, and just, yeah, dive in, participate, be seen and see and see and be seen That's awesome the important thing so terrific well it's been a pleasure peter as always and um, look forward to collaborating with you more in the future well, we definitely will and and i'm really looking forward to your session on the 21st that should be uh that should be a lot of fun and and a real learning experience you know because we, i mean we're all trying to figure this out as we as we uh go along right yeah yeah, absolutely. We're making it up as we go along, as they say. Yeah, and it helps to have your peers around you that you can bounce ideas, questions, thoughts, and you know, collaborate. Absolutely. On how do we, how do we get past this and and beyond? You know, how do we get uh, keep the wheels spinning and keep things going? 